This is lesson 25 of the full audio engineering course, and we're going to be talking about the basics with computers. If you already kind of know a bit about computers, then this video isn't for you. Just skip it, move on to the next one. But if you don't know what um, RAM is, what the CPU is, and what hard disks, then stick around. I'm going to explain that stuff. Now I'm going to be talking about a computer more specifically for audio production. Now a big part of this is, well, should I go with a Mac or a PC? And that's actually a pretty significant decision and uh, I didn't want that to take up too much room in this video. So I just did a separate video on that. Link is in the description. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on the various hardware components of a computer and what to look for for something that'll meet your needs in audio production. Now these specs are universal to both Mac and PC computers. So there's three main things. Well, let's say three and a half. There's three and a half main things that uh, I wanna go over. One is the CPU, two is your RAM, three is your hard drive, and three and a half is your graphics processor. So one, your CPU, well, that's your processing power. That is how quickly the computer can process information and do number crunching and figure things out. So for instance, if you're mixing and mastering a song, you're gonna have several plugins instantiated. And these plugins could be like, a, let's just say an EQ, for instance, um, and you wanna boost the treble. Well, that requires processing power. The computer has to do some number crunching, figure out the math, and figure out what it needs to do to boost that treble. And a faster processor will be able to handle more instances of EQs. So like on a large project, for instance, you might have 30, 40, 50, 100, maybe 150 tracks, right? Um, audio projects can get quite large and complex. And you need a computer that can handle all the processing that's required by these big projects. So I would say the biggest part in your decision of what to get for a computer other than like Mac versus PC, is how big of projects do you want to be able to handle with this computer? Do you want something high end that can handle huge projects like what I just said? Or do you just play guitar and you sing and it'll rarely be more than two or three tracks? See, if it's just two or three tracks, then honestly, any computer will work. That puts a very low amount of strain on a computer. So you don't need high specs for a small project like that. But when you get into larger projects, you want to look into a computer that has a bit higher specs in all those areas. So your CPU is how much processing it can do simultaneously. There's a couple of different factors to consider with your CPU. One is the speed in which it figures things out. And two is the number of cores in the processor. A two core processor will have twice as much processing power as a one core processor of the same speed. There's not very many computers that only have a single core anymore. Most have at least a dual core, which is two cores. Um, a lot of laptops will have four cores, even eight cores. Some of the new Mac laptops have like 10 or more cores. So this can make a big difference in how much information it can handle at once. Next, I'm gonna talk about your hard drive. There's two main things about your hard drive. This is like your main storage for all the software, photos, music, all the main stuff that you wanna put on the computer, it's stored on the hard drive. And the two big things about the hard drive are whether it's solid state or um, a spinning magnetic disc. And then the other thing is the volume, the capacity. Is it um, a few, is it like a 500 gigabyte hard drive, a one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, eight terabyte? I mean, they come in all different sizes and shapes too, really. Um, but the important thing is what's the capacity and is it solid state or magnetic spinning disc? And if it's solid state, now, you might want to consider how fast it is, but that's not really an issue anymore. Even the slowest of the solid state hard drives that are available are still plenty fast enough for like very large audio sessions. So I'll start by explaining like the spinning disc hard drives. These are a little bit more old fashioned, I might say. They're kind of um, becoming old technology. They're still used because they have a higher capacity at a lower price point compared to solid state. So for like large backup systems, yeah, these spinning disc drives work fantastic. So as far as audio production, if your computer has a magnetic spinning drive as its main hard drive, it would probably be a good idea for you to record everything to an external hard drive. So when you open up your project and you click save and it asks you, well, where do you want to save? It asks you to choose a location, plug in an external hard drive and use that hard drive as the saving location. The reason for that is because the main hard drive for your computer also holds your operating system and that has occasional spikes in reading and writing that it just needs to perform tasks with. And like I said, these spinning disk drives just aren't as fast. They're not as capable of reading and writing several streams of information simultaneously. So within your recording project, if you're recording to the same hard drive as your main operating system, it could cause crashes. So to be safe, record to an external hard drive if your main computer hard drive is 
a spinning disk drive. If your main computer hard drive is a solid state drive, then it's just not an issue anymore. Those solid state drives are plenty fast and they're capable of reading and writing several streams simultaneously. So you'd be able to get into very large projects before it starts becoming an issue, like hundreds of tracks. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about your RAM. This is your short-term memory, we could consider it to be. So your, your main hard drive stores the bulk of the information, but to get the information off of that main hard drive, the computer has to find it and take that information off and it's not super fast. So what the RAM does is it tries to predict what information you might need instantly and it preloads that information onto the RAM. For instance, if you're playing a software instrument, like let's say you're playing a, a piano on your electronic keyboard and you have the sounds on your computer. So those sounds take up like, well, it can be like five gigabytes worth of space on the main hard drive. And as soon as you hit those keys, it might not be able to stream all of that information off the hard drive quick enough because it's instantaneous. So what'll happen is when you load a sound up and you're about to play it, it'll take the first, ah, let's just say like half a second or a second of sound from each note on the keyboard, preload that into the RAM so that it's instantly accessible. So your RAM will be like eight gigs, 16 gigs, 32 gigs, whatever. It'll have a certain amount of memory that's lower than your main hard drive, but whatever gets loaded onto that memory can be accessed extremely fast. So the RAM basically acts as a buffer in between your main hard drive and your central processor. And the third and a half thing that I wanna talk about is the graphics processing. Now, some computers do not have a dedicated graphics processor and all of the graphics get processed by the CPU, the main processor. And that's fine for light duties. And honestly, within music production, it's mostly light duties for graphic processing. I mean, what graphics are needed? It needs to display the waveform. Um, you might need to like scroll around up and down, side to side, zoom in, zoom out. So there is a small amount of graphics processing, but um, Graphics processing is more related to video production and gaming, really. But having good graphics processing does take a little bit of burden off of the main CPU and can help your computer run a little smoother for audio production. So in conclusion, if you want to get a computer specifically for audio production, I mean, 10 years ago, I would have said, yeah, get a Mac. The technology's gotten a lot better and there's less issues as far as incompatibility. Uh, everything seems to work a lot smoother now and it doesn't really matter as much. Like pretty much any modern computer, even a laptop, will work for audio production. It just mostly depends on the size of projects you want your computer to be able to handle. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video.